Hi, I'm Roger Woods, minister with the Wald Lake Church of Christ. Thank you for viewing this pre-recorded sermon for January 22nd, 2023. If you are local to the northwest side of Metro Detroit, I'd love to have you come and visit us. Uh, we are a church who is focused on making disciples for Christ, who know, love, serve, and share God, their Savior, in their lives. We'd love for you to join us. Uh, and help us continue this mission that Christ gave us long ago when he said, go make disciples of all nations. Today, I will be breaking our scripture reading up into three parts. All come from Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 11 through 32. I encourage you to get your Bibles out, open and ready to follow along. Also, get your pad and paper out, uh, or pad and pen out, uh, Take notes and feel free to email me with any questions that you might have about this lesson. Let's begin our reading with verses 11 through 20a. Then he said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that I will inherit. And so the father divided up the property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered together everything he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of destitute living. When he had spent it all, a severe famine afflicted that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants who sent him to his farm to feed the pigs. He would have willingly filled his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired workers have more food than they can consume? Well, here I am, dying of hunger. I will depart from this place and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired workers. So he set out for his father's house. We began January with this sermon series focused on knowing God. Not just the facts about God, but knowing God personally. We talked about his desire to give us good gifts the best being the indwelling presence of his Holy Spirit. Last week, we were reminded of how mercy is a part of God's essential nature. When we read in the New Testament that God is love, it is a reference to the same idea of mercy. This week, we will look at the God who forgives. Tony Campalo, the author of the book Men of Integrity, tells something that gives us an insight into our Heavenly Father, and ourselves. He writes simply, God carries our picture in his wallet. It doesn't matter if you dyed your hair or you lost your hair. It doesn't matter if you pierced your ear or your nose or whatever. It doesn't matter if you just got that big promotion or if you just got fired. God carries your picture in his wallet. You know, our relationship with our earthly fathers are not always so reassuring. Stuff happens. Tempers flare. Words are exchanged that can't be taken back. Pride stiffens its back and, reasons, and reason fades away. We need fathers, our fathers, so desperately. But as I said, stuff happens. It is a dynamic that is seen in every culture and in every epoch of history. Ernest Hemingway wrote a story about a father and his teenage son. In the story, the relationship had become strained. And the teenage son ran away from home. His father began a journey to try to reach that rebellious son. Finally, in Madrid, Spain, in a last desperate attempt to find the boy, the father put an ad in the local newspaper. The ad read, Dear Paco, Meet me in front of the newspaper office at noon. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. 
the next day in front of the newspaper office. 800 Pacos showed up. They were all seeking forgiveness. They were all seeking the love of their father. Our second reading begins in verse 20, the second half. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran to him, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out the finest robe we have and put it on him. Place a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fatted calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has now been found. And they began to celebrate. You know, there are so many ways to approach the parable of the prodigal son. Today, I want to focus on God's desire to forgive. Why forgiveness? Because it opens a window into the heart of God and is a natural development of God's nature, his loving, merciful nature. I believe that is just what Jesus is trying to show the elder brothers, a.k.a. the Pharisees, who didn't understand the true nature of the God that they served. We noted last week how their legalistic approach had blinded them to their own sin and inconsistency. In chapter 15, Jesus introduces this parable with two shorter ones, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. In each one, he talks about the rejoicing that occurs when that which was lost is found. In essence, our Lord is saying, God is like the shepherd. God is like the woman. God is like the father. The God the Pharisees should have known, but did not. In the parable of the prodigal son, the father is deeply shamed by his son's wild and reckless behavior. But when that son comes back and begs for forgiveness, Jesus depicts a radical portrayal of the father's reaction. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion which is another way of saying mercy, for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. You know, we don't have to learn about the father's love for the son before the words are even out or into this dishonored boy's mouth. The father has embraced him. The text implies that the son came to the father in the same state that he left when he walked out of that pig pen. And yet the father embraced his stinking, unwashed body and he kissed the boy. And if his son had looked, and I don't think he was looking, I think his eyes were down on the ground, he was so ashamed. If he had been looking, he would have seen that smile on his father's face. He would have seen the tears of joy in his eyes. He would have seen a father's love. But this was a reaction that was beyond comprehension for him. He'd been a rebellious son. He'd done things that were just unimaginable, horrible. This was not going to the script the son had predicted. His, son's, his father's reaction was not according to what he expected. You see, the the script the prodigal had was different. Remember what the, see what the son says in verse 21. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Now, according to the prodigal script, this is where the father lets him come back, but only as a slave, not as a member of the household. The prodigal steals himself to accept this justly deserved punishment. He may have even thought to himself, I'm no good. I'm just a selfish piece of trash. I wouldn't even take me back. But the father has something entirely different in mind. 
he was reading a different script. Matter of fact, he was reading a completely different play. The prodigal was in a melodramatic tragedy while the father was in a romantic love story. They needed to get into the same story, and, and so do we. We need to understand God's story and join him. Verse 22 continues, But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is now alive again. He was lost and now is found. And they began to have a big party. Now, some of you are thinking right now, you know, this father is a pushover. He'd just forgive about anything, wouldn't he? And yes, you're right. And you're wrong. You're right in that God, who is obviously the father in this parable, will forgive us our sins, even the unimaginable ones, even the big ones. Because of God's love, we are told in John 3.16, that Jesus was given so that we could be justified and receive forgiveness for our sins. God is forgiving. God is love. And love is not love if it is not forgiving. You're right. God will forgive just about anything. But you're wrong if you think he's a pushover. Would the prodigal have been forgiven if he had not returned? If the prodigal had come back and demanded forgiveness and a return to his place as a son, <clears throat> would he have been so well received? I don't think so. <clears throat> it was his humble and contrite heart that put him within the embrace and forgiveness of his father. God holds his forgiveness until we're ready. If we still hold with our rebellious pride, then God's grace is not ours because we have stepped outside of his embrace. Paul sums it up so well in Romans, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Excuse me while I grab a <clears throat> sip of tea, get my throat cleared. Let's continue on with our third reading, beginning in verse 25 of Luke 15. Now the elder son had been out in the fields, and as he returned and drew near the house, he could hear the sounds of music and dancing. He summoned one of the servants and inquired what all this meant. The servant replied, Your brother has come home. Your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The elder son then became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he said to his father in reply, all these years, I have worked like a slave for you, and I never once disobeyed your orders. Even so, you have never even given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returns after wasting his inheritance from you on prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are with me always, and everything that I have is yours. But it was only right that we should celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and now has been found. You know, I think we can all fall into the attitude of the older brother. We can all be resentful. Obviously, Jesus had those Pharisees in mind. But any of us who have failed to understand God, failed to understand what we have always had in Christ, can fall victim to the same attitude, especially when we fall into the, you know, I've earned this trap. 
you know, all these years I've worked, I deserve this, not this scumbag of a, you know, you fill in the blank. You know, grace is so misunderstood. God's unmerited favor is his gift, not our right. It's God's gift, not our purchase. Indeed, it was purchased. It was purchased at the cost of God's uniquely begotten Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are not due more because we started first or worked longer. We are all inheritors of the same inheritance. And we should be happy to share it with those who discover it, no matter who they were and what they have done. This was the older brother's problem. He thought he had to earn. Indeed, he thought he had earned his father's love. When in reality, he'd had it all along. He had kept himself from the inheritance that he could have enjoyed because of his attitude. Whether we are a prodigal or an older brother, we need to remember our father is waiting for us. If we're the prodigal, He's pacing on the front porch. He's been asking about you in town. He's been pulling out his wallet and showing you, showing others your picture and saying, have you seen him? Have you seen him? Matter of fact, he's put an ad in the personal column. He's put it out on Facebook. He's put it on Instagram. He's even put a video on TikTok. And he's saying, dear child, meet me today at my house. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. Now, if you're the older brother, well, then you need to understand that God has always loved you. And all that is God's has always been yours. There's no special treatment here. God celebrates all of us and loves us all. And we all stand in need of forgiveness. Now, I want to encourage you today to come back to the Lord. Come to his family, the church, to the body of Christ. We have gathered and we strive not to be like the older brother. We strive to welcome you to the family if you have wandered away and welcome to you anew if it's your first time coming to Christ. You see, we have played the prodigal ourselves. We've gone astray. We've also been like the older brother. But now, now we repent and we understand better the grace of our merciful Heavenly Father. And we long to share his joy with you. God's grace is yours today if you will only come to him in simple faith and trust. The Father gave the prodigal son a feast. And that is just what our Heavenly Father has in store for you. A spiritual feast that will sustain you through this life and into the next. All things are ready. Come to the feast. Don't wait. Begin to enjoy this feast that you will find nourishment from throughout this life and into eternal life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his Father's house in heaven. God bless you, and have a great day.